Hello, this is Jason Jones, and I'd like to describe a case to you uh, of pseudo-exfoliation in the setting of uh, a moderately dense cataract. This patient has poor pupillary dilation, and despite viscoelastic as well as epi-sugar cane, the pupil remains poorly dilated. So placement of a Malugan pupil expander ring is very helpful here. I like to use a two-handed technique to place the three leading coils and then the trailing coil is placed uh, with a Kuglin hook. It's helpful to note the excessive wrinkling of the anterior capsule during puncture as well as the extra wrinkling anterior to the capsular tear. A successfully completed capsulotomy is fashioned and then the nucleus is hydrodissected. I'm very careful here to pursue a posterior fluid wave as you can barely see there despite the cortical spoking. And then rotation is tested here. It's very difficult to achieve easy and free rotation and I feel this sometimes compromises annular integrity so uh, just some rotation ability is helpful here. A vertical chop is used and I am persistent to ensure that I have cleavage all the way down through the posterior plate. This will help mobilize these nuclear pieces in a moment. As the central nucleus has been evacuated during the chop, these pieces are then centrally mobilized and readily evacuated. The cleavage that I ensured occurred uh, is helpful here in mobilizing these pieces as you can see and rotation is difficult as more of the capsular bag has been liberated of its uh, nuclear material. In fact this nucleus seems to uh, rotate over on top of itself. Now at the uh, end here I've used Helon Indicoat to ensure I have a good capsular tamponade to reduce surge issues as the last remnant piece is evacuated and the Indicoat is topped up in the capsular bag. The excessive zonular laxity is readily apparent here and uh, going to another area I am able to mobilize a small piece of cortex. Cortex removal truly is the most difficult portion of these cases as there's simply almost nothing there to hold back the capsular bag. Careful, slow, and deliberate movements are helpful and using linear control of aspiration and vacuum permits a very controlled approach to these uh, um, cortical remnants. Options that would exist here would be um, capsular hooks, a capsular tension ring, or in this case I'm employing a viscodissection technique. So while I have the aspiration port of the IA handpiece filled with a very low vacuum, as you can see on the video overlay, I'm able to viscodissect this material from the capsular bag and evacuate it from the anterior chamber. This is a coordinated movement. And I've found it to be very effective in some of these more advanced zonulopathy cases.
feel it's very important to remove as much of the lens material, both nucleus and cortex, to ensure that we have minimal inflammation and less capsule contraction postoperatively. Posterior handle here is fashioned as well from the central portion of the posterior capsule and additional OVD is used to dissect that material which permits its evacuation. Now under additional viscoelastic, a terry squeegee is used to mobilize some of the material and then a dry aspiration technique is employed. This is very helpful in the subincisional region as the paracentesis permits good access to this region using a cannula. A standard capsular tension ring is placed with forceps. I like to stabilize the eye with a spatula. The three o'clock position of the capsule bag is used as a pivot point for the leading haptic or eyelet and then the trailing eyelet is placed similar to a three-piece lens might be. The wound is slightly enlarged as this is not a technique for placing uh, a lens with wound assist. And then a three-piece lens is placed into the ciliary sulcus Using an acrylic material here is very helpful in terms of having control during the unfolding of the lens. And the trailing haptic is placed as well. I can note here that I have optic capture. But the lens is not centering well initially. So a slight rotation of the lens then permits a good centration. The nasal coil is relieved from the pupillary edge and then the subincisional as well. And I like to use the Melugan inserter for retraction of the ring. The OVD is aspirated from anterior to the optic and the lens is belotted to ensure that viscoelastic does present forward. The wounds are checked and found watertight. The patient has done well.